What's the best way to learn cinematography? To learn anything well, you need to go down two paths, theory and practice. You need both. If you had to choose, which is not really possible, practice should take precedence. No amount of watching somebody swim will teach you swimming, but a combination of practice and watching will accelerate your learning. There are tons of free articles and videos online about learning cinematography. In today's world, the question is not where to find information, but whom to learn from, and whether or not that person can accelerate your improvement. Those who pick up a camera are cinematographers in the same way anyone holding up a pen is Tolstoy. Cinematography is such a touchy subject, you might have formed your own opinions on it, so let's talk about something different, like an animal. How about a fossa? You've probably seen the fossa in Madagascar, but never bothered to understand what it is. Ever asked yourself why the fossa is the only animal that doesn't talk? Forget the cartoon, let's talk about real fossas. You can Google fossas. You probably start with Wikipedia, because Google gives more importance to education that is crowdsourced. You're fascinated. Fossas are actually from Madagascar. Who would have thought? You scroll past the Wikipedia link to dive deeper. You might even stumble across a few websites from people who might or might not be experts. One says fossas love f2.8, and the other says f4. Whom do you believe? You realize the only way to know for sure is to buy a ticket to Madagascar and see one for yourself. Maybe stroke it a bit. If you do that, would you consider yourself an expert in fossas at this point? Only as much as any kid who visits a zoo and feeds a giraffe carrots. Like Socrates, you realize you know very little about fossas. You are determined to go further, so you build your own fossa farm. Your passion knows no bounds. Who would have thought fossa shot in both f2.8 and f4? Some even shoot at f8 all the time. Screw shallow depth of field, they say. You are in love. You apply to vet school. You become a doctor of fossas. But now, you're just a new cub in the club. You'll have to spend the rest of your life with fossas and fossa lovers. You'll never be a real fossa, and that enrages you no end. But you're a brother from another mother. You can share a few beers with your fossa. You might even get bitten a few times. In the words of the immortal King Julian, what's a nibble among friends? Your relationship is far beyond Wikipedia or PETA. You have earned the right to bite him back. Learning anything has no bounds, has no end. And even when you know something thoroughly and passionately, you might still not apply it correctly. Or you might forget. Or just get too tired to pay attention. Mistakes happen whether you're a beginner or Oscar winner. Now imagine you're right at the beginning again. You Google cinematography and you read a Wikipedia article. You read the first information packed paragraph in awe, but you don't understand a thing. You might get lucky and stumble across a wolf crow video. That's like somebody left a baby fossa on your doorstep wrapped in an information manual. You're in luck. What happens at the beginning of your journey is important. A bad teacher who has no passion or experience can ruin your entire interest in cinematography. If you've ever attended a day of school, you'll know what I mean. What if you came across videos or articles that translate no passion or expertise? You might abandon cinematography because nobody showed you how much fun it can be. The person you meet at the beginning is important because this person, through experience, will know what lies ahead and where not to waste time. Like cameras, for example, they're not as important as people make them out to be. Wasting time is the worst danger. How well you want to learn cinematography depends on your goals and what you want to get out of it. Not all cinematography is the same. Let me give an example. Both Emmanuel Lubezki and Casey Neistat have a handheld, wide-angle, natural lighting kind of style. To Casey Neistat, great cinematography is a camera on autofocus on a gorilla pod. I think Emmanuel Lubezki has a totally different aesthetic. The medium dictates the style. If Lubezki tries Casey's style, he'll probably be able to do it, like the iPhone commercial shows. But if Casey tries Lubezki's style, he'll have a harder time because learning those tools in real life takes time. Who knows? He might not even enjoy it. But who can say that one is better than the other in general terms? Both are great cinematographers for the medium they cater to. The best way to understand the world of cinematography is to think of it as a theme park. There are many entrances. If you enter through one gate, you might not have sufficient time to see the rides at the other end, especially if you're having fun at the rides near the entrance you came in from. Somebody else might use another entrance and have a totally different experience of the park. Everyone has fun, but not on the same rides and not in the same order. You don't need to be a YouTube star or an Academy Award winner to be good in cinematography. You can be better than both 
and still not win anything. That's the nature of art in general. We at Wolfcrow take great pride in the quality and breadth of filmmaking education, but the second side of the coin is practice. No amount of learning about exposure will prepare you for the real thing. It's like riding a bike. You can watch somebody else do it for decades, but you won't be able to balance yourself the first time. So how do you practice? The simplest way to practice is to use your mobile phone. Everyone has one these days. Even the kids who like to brag about being broke in the YouTube comments have a phone or computer. They don't know what being poor really means. Being poor means not having clean water to drink, not being able to eat a meal every day, and have society look down on you every time you step out of that tent you call home, which is most likely illegal. You, with the phone and education, yeah, you. You're not poor or broke, you're just lazy. Get out there and practice with whatever you have. You're privileged because you don't have to fight to survive every day. You're privileged because you have the luxury of choice to learn cinematography of all things. And here you are complaining you don't have the right camera or opportunity, or you blame your teacher. Go f-stop yourself. Like everything in life, you must earn your camera, your opportunity, and your good teacher. Go make something, film something, find passion and keep growing. Unless you're in a war-torn country, spend your days filming something. If you're blaming the pandemic for being stuck at home, then film something at home. If you're a champion at making excuses, film yourself making excuses. Once you're past the first step, find people whose work you like and learn from them. If you like our work, learn from us. We're the best online film school, period. We teach how to light with cheap and DIY equipment. You can watch tons of exclusive video essays, the cinematographer series, the film lighting series, and so on. All for a fraction of what film school costs. Cheaper than a good lens. With the money you save, go make movies. The only teacher better than Wolf Crow is life. Click the link in the description to know more about Wolf Crow Lifetime Access. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.